My name is Kate Malone and I make ceramics. I fell in love with clay at school and then studied for seven years in further education, finally at the Royal College of Art. 47 years later, I'm still passionate about it. It still offers the most magical possibilities and I'm always impatient to get to work. I work in my studio with a team of skilled artists, teaching them, developing their skills and playing to their strengths and pulling this all together according to my vision. It's a privilege to form a team of people in this way and to work with them. I'm cutting a bit off so it doesn't matter if there's a little bit wrong. They expand my possibilities and it's as if I have many pairs of hands. Developing the team keeps me on my toes. I'm always striving to see how things can be best made. To make a piece, I model the raw clay in many stages. What I'm interested in is that transition there. That's, I think this that's can take weeks there. and I have to keep it moist and workable during that time. Once finished, we leave it to dry and it's bisque fired in a kiln. That's when the irreversible physical transformation happens from clay into ceramic. I believe that the creative process actually develops during the making of a series of works. I have faith in this process that I will make the right choices at the right time. And just remember that roll one, two. Yeah, okay, thanks. For this reason, making ceramics is really exciting because each piece is a revelation to me. I don't start a piece knowing exactly what I want. I'm inspired by nature and by the life force, which is the essence of growth. It encompasses earth, air, fire, and water. The next stage is glazing. Every glaze is precisely mixed according to a recipe. And for 30 years, I've researched and developed thousands of my own colors. In fact, I'm still creating new colors and effects all the time. This is my artist palette. What I'm doing is taking elements from the earth, mixing them and melting them in the heat of the kiln like volcanic magma to create flowing crystalline surfaces that are set forever. I cherish this process because it allows me to be part conductor, part chemist, part technician and above all a creative artist. Ceramics is this extraordinary mix of technical process, with knowledge, with creativity, and the ability to remain open to new ideas and possibilities. One of my most exciting projects has been my association with Waddesdon Manor, where I had a residency and an exhibition. I'm gonna see the pots that I made for Waddesdon on a table next to landmark pots. Waddesdon was built by Baron Ferdinand de Rothschild in the late 19th century in the French style and filled with his astounding collection of extraordinary treasures. Ferdinand was one of the most influential collectors in British history. He amassed one of the world's greatest collections of Sèvres porcelain, owning several examples of the very rarest models and the most unique pieces. The best thing about working at Woodstone was being able to study very closely these ultimate examples of Sèvres porcelain. One of the things I love about studying these pieces is that they can connect us with the people who made them across time and across space. And the light passing under that pearl, just perfect. When I'm lucky enough to pick up a piece of Sèvres, I can feel the maker's hands and the marks they made because the clay was once soft. This is timeless. It's easy to forget this because it looks so immaculate. It's sort of evidence of the hand. Yeah. It's a great privilege to be able to touch these pots and to get to know them in this intimate way. These are almost fingerless, aren't they? 
we have to remember that these pieces were made at the end of the 18th century. This was an extraordinary technical feat. These shapes, these colours, this perfect finish were all handmade. So it's so totally about function and form and decoration. They came out of wood-fired kilns where ash and soot was flying around in the fire. Of course we have more sophisticated technology today, but it is still basically about hand skills and about a physical process that will never change. This galleon potpourri has a fluidity and an intricacy that I'm sure comes from the continuum of a team of artisans working together to the vision of the designer. And then this great spiral with the fleur de lis and then the way the porcelain just hangs in midair. In other words, it is the product of an evolution very much like the one that I work with and I aim to achieve. Each one of the series is slightly different the artist was clearly open to change within the creative process because when you look at a series of the same type of piece, you see differences. During the process of my residency, to my surprise, I made two portrait pots of Baron Ferdinand and of his sister Alice, who maintained Wadston and its collection after her brother's death. I had never made portrait pots before, the lids of the pots relate to the manor's roof shapes and to Ferdinand and Alice's passions. To have them all on the table together is just the most tender moment. Ferdinand loved birds, he loved boxes, and his favourite plant was bay leaves, and Alice loved formal gardens and gardening. A pot has a lip, a neck, a shoulder, a belly and a foot, all in corporal posture. Ferdinand and Alice were brother and sister, and I would like to think that these two pots, acquired for the permanent collection at Wadston, embody not only them, but the essence of Wadston. I'm deeply honored to have my pieces here, under the same roof as the Sèvres. It makes me realize that all ceramics throughout history go back to the hand, the creative spirit, and to the elements of earth, air, fire, and water. <laughs>